Dragon Ball is the story of Son Goku, a very no shit statement to kick the video off on, but a very important one to establish. Because a lot of people are under the wrong assumption that Dragon Ball is an ensemble cast story. A type of story where all characters are created equal, they all have equal value as one another, they should all be equally important to the storyline, get equal opportunities for development, for hype moments, and all that kind of stuff. And while the Dragon Ball series most certainly does have a wide variety of interesting and fun characters, all of whom have cool dynamics dynamics with one another and played pivotal roles in at least one storyline each. Dragon Ball is about Goku. It is about his endless pursuit of self-improvement and the various enemies slash rivals slash adversaries slash frenemies that he meets along the way in that aforementioned pursuit of self-improvement. Even in storylines where Goku himself plays a very small role and barely appears if we're going to be honest, such as the Bardock special or Trunks the story, Goku's presence or rather lack thereof still plays a pivotal role in how characters act, the situations they find themselves in, and informs a lot of their decisions either directly or indirectly. Goku is the heart and soul of Dragon Ball, and it's very important to establish this to explain the true intent behind the Torment of Power storyline. Because much like Goku and Dragon Ball itself, the Torment of Power has a bit of a misconception in the fandom surrounding it. The misconception being that the Torment of Power blew open the Dragon Ball universe, introducing dozens upon dozens of new new characters, all of whom can be explored in infinite storylines, all of whom have equal value, equal importance, and are just ripe with new storytelling potential. And after talking to a few people on a very specific chat room, who are very much Toriyama enthusiasts, they've gone into the depths of his work, they've read all of his stuff, and seeing them explain how this guy thinks, and what kind of the thought process is behind the Tournament of Power, I can safely say that this whole idea that the Tournament of Power blew open the universe is one of the biggest loads of bullshit regurgitated by the Dragon Ball fandom right now. Because the Tournament of Power does not blow open the Dragon Ball universe, it rather shrinks it down and tells us that the vast majority of the multiverse is completely irrelevant to Goku's story. And if it's irrelevant to Goku's story, they are irrelevant to Dragon Ball and Toriyama by their very extension. As I already said, Goku is a character about self-improvement. He doesn't want to fight Frieza and then have his next opponent be Raditz level. He wants to fight someone beyond Frieza, which turns out to be the androids and Cell, and then he wants to fight someone beyond those guys, and then beyond that, and then beyond that, and constantly go forward. And as we see in the Torment of Power, Basically, no one outside of Topo, Jiren, and maybe a couple other exceptions can really do this to Goku. Seriously, the vast majority of the participants in the Torment of Power are worthless scrubs that cannot really challenge Goku. They cannot push him to new heights. They cannot make him break through his limits the same way Jiren does. These other participants aren't really there even for Goku's sake. Jiren is Goku's main adversary for the storyline. He is the main rival, the guy who will push Goku farther than anyone has ever before, and the rest of the participants are just there so that the entire arc isn't just Goku fighting Jiren. It's there to add variety, it's there to give some of the other characters who tag along with Goku something else to do, but ultimately the entire point of the Tournament of Power is to tell us that the vast majority of the multiverse are worthless scrubs who are irrelevant to Goku's development and can offer nothing to him, and that Jiren and a handful of other exceptions are the relevant people. And that might seem very, very harsh for me to say and very unbelievable for Dragon Ball of all things, but Dragon Ball is, by its very design, very dismissive of older things. Once a character gets surpassed, the storyline basically leaves them in the dust and moves on to other things. It's only really exceptions like Vegeta, a very specific character who's managed to resist that kind of dustbin that Piccolo, Ten Shinhan, and a bunch of other characters have fallen into, mostly because I think Toriyama just likes to have duo characters, and he wants Goku to have someone to constantly play around with, and Vegeta still wants to train, so Vegeta just stays relevant. The vast, vast, vast majority of Goku's other rivals and adversaries, they've just fallen by the wayside, and they're really not important anymore. 
This kind of dismissive attitude is very much a part of the Dragon Ball experience. Hence why I tell you guys that the Tournament of Power did not blow open the universe of Dragon Ball. It tells us that while you can have some cool dynamics and stuff with these new introduced characters, they can't offer Goku anything in terms of progression. They are not going to be able to push him to newer and greater heights. They serve their purpose for being in a big Battle Royale storyline, but beyond that, they really have nothing else to offer. And the character of Jiren himself very much exemplifies this point. Not only is Jiren's dicking around mode stronger than all the Hakai Shin, but his ultimate power is so great that it actually is able to challenge Ultra Instinct Goku, the strongest version of Goku we have ever seen, and the strongest version of Goku that will ever be without devolving into Western comic book levels of bullshit idiocy. Another very deliberate decision, because Toriyama wants to put a pin on all this stuff. He wants Goku, even briefly, to definitively not just bypass Beerus, but bypass all of the Hakaishin to such an extreme to get a taste of what the ultimate possible version of Goku will look like without actually giving it to him because Goku becoming his ultimate self is not really the point. It's always the journey of improving himself, never stopping, always taking another step forward. Hence why Goku does not ultimately master Ultra Instinct. Instead, he just briefly gets it, and then the storyline moves on. A very, very deliberate choice on Toriyama's part to make the Tournament of Power a true conclusion. And as an aside, this is also one of the reasons why the Broly movie and the Moro storyline by Toyotaro both don't really work. Because they add nothing to Goku's progression. Goku doesn't attain another new level of power, neither of them are stronger than Jiren. In fact, they're both much, much weaker than Jiren's even dicking around mode. And because Toriyama himself doesn't really want Goku to even surpass Beerus on his own, unless we're talking about fusion or Ultra Instinct, you have this very awkward situation for the character where Toriyama doesn't want him to get stronger than Beerus and Jiren, and so all the following antagonists have to be really awkwardly stuck in this position where they have to be weaker than than both of these guys, and Goku can't really progress in a big manner anymore, and that kills a lot of the inherent enjoyment of Dragon Ball, which is the progression. It's a very similar problem that Toyotaro's Goku vs. Hit fight had in the manga. Instead of seeing Goku push himself to the next level, making himself truly stronger, Goku goes backwards and gets Super Saiyan God, retroactively making Hit weaker than fucking Frieza was. That's the same problem that Super Broly and the Moro arcs have as well. So yeah, this video is kind of rambling, it's a bit all over the place, but I think I got my point across. The point of the Torment of Power is not to blow open the Dragon Ball universe. It is rather to tell us that the vast majority of the multiverse is his fucking shit, and we'll probably never ever see it again in any kind of Toriyama pen storyline. Heroes and video games and potentially other spin-offs will play around with that stuff, but I think as far as Toriyama's concerned, the Battle Royale people serve their purpose for being Battle Royale people. <laughs>